Toma News presents The Sun. Staring directly at the solar eclipse could really mess up your eyes. If you're planning to watch the Great American Eclipse on August 21st, then you need to know the dangers of staring directly at the sun. Staring directly at the sun during an eclipse can cause solar retinopathy. Symptoms of solar retinopathy include loss of visual sharpness, blind spots, changes in color vision, or distortion when looking at straight lines or grids. Heating of the retina by one or two degrees is enough to damage retinal cells, which can occur within 30 to 60 seconds of staring at an eclipse. Eye experts advise anyone watching the eclipse to use eclipse glasses or the pinhole box method. Meet our sun's long lost evil twin. Scientists have long believed that stars are born with at least one companion. Unfortunately, there hasn't been much evidence to support this theory until now. A new study has found that sun-like stars initially form as wide binaries and either come together or break apart over the next million years. Some systems, like the Alpha Centauri, even form as triplets. Our sun would have been separated by a distance of 500 or more astronomical units from its twin star before it was believed to have moved farther away. The twin has been dubbed Nemesis after scientists hypothesized that it had knocked an asteroid out of orbit and sent it hurtling toward Earth. They say that asteroid eventually collided with our planet and killed off the dinosaurs. Still, Nemesis has never actually been found, and the idea that it may be responsible for catastrophic events on Earth has yet to be proved. It's going to be hell on Earth. Astronomers predict that all life on Earth will be wiped out in the future as the sun balloons in size and scorches the planet. Using the world's most powerful radio telescope, scientists forecast that within 5 billion years, the sun will grow into a red giant star 100 times its current size. The sun will swallow up and destroy its two closest planets, Mercury and Venus. All life on Earth is likely to be destroyed, but there is a possibility the rocky core of the planet could survive. In 7 billion years, the Sun will then experience intense loss of mass due to strong stellar winds that will see it evolve into a tiny white dwarf star. If the Earth's rocky core survives, it may continue to orbit the white dwarf star. The white dwarf star will be similar to Earth in size, but much heavier. One teaspoon of its matter will weigh about 5 tons. The astronomers' conclusions are based on examining an evolved star 208 light years away from Earth, which 5 billion years ago was very similar to our Sun. The scientists say an object orbiting that evolved star is likely to be a planet, and further study could offer unique insights into Earth's eventual fate. Mercury about to make a rare appearance across the Sun's face. Our solar system's smallest planet will be visible on Monday as it passes between Earth and the Sun, a rare spectacle that only occurs a few times a century. While the Earth takes 365 days to orbit the Sun, Mercury only takes 88 days to make the journey. Skywatchers worldwide will be able to witness part of this voyage on Monday. Mercury passes between Earth and the Sun three times a year, about every four months. However, Mercury's tilted orbit prevents us normally seeing this journey. As Mercury's orbit is inclined 7 degrees to the plane of Earth's orbit, it's rare for the three bodies to line up so that Mercury is in our direct line of sight to the Sun. In fact, this only occurs 13 to 14 times a century. The next time we'll be able to view Mercury's transit will be in 2019 and 2032. Mercury, which is about three times smaller than Earth, will be just one of 158th the width of the Sun's disk so its movement across the Sun is only visible with high-powered lenses. Mercury will take about seven and a half hours to move across the Sun, beginning from 7.12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until around 2.42 p.m. An interesting phenomenon that can be observed is the black drop effect, which occurs when Mercury's edge forms a teardrop shape as it touches the Sun's edge. Mercury's flit across the Sun will be visible through much of Western Europe, Northwestern Africa, and the Americas, while other areas of the world may see part of the transit. Solar Flare The glowing yellow orb of life floating millions of miles away at the center of our solar system flared up in a massive, massive way this week. A massive storm over the Sun on Wednesday discharged the strongest solar flare in 10 years. 
The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says the X9.3 flare caused high-frequency radio blackouts and navigational issues over the sunlit part of Earth. According to NASA, solar flares take place when magnetic energy built up within the sun's atmosphere is suddenly released. They impact everything on the electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to X-rays. The energy released is equivalent to millions of 100 megaton nuclear bombs exploding at the same time. The last solar flare of similar strength occurred in 2006, and the strongest on record took place in 2001. Life on Earth may have been sparked by super flares from the sun. Some 4 billion years ago, only 70% of the sun's energy was received by the Earth, not enough to warm the planet. Despite this, geological evidence shows it was a warm globe with liquid water. Scientists have long been puzzled by this paradox, but new research may finally have an explanation. Super flares. Our sun today produces super flares once every 100 years. The bulk of this energy is kept from reaching Earth by the planet's strong magnetic field. When the sun was much younger, only a few million years old, the flares were much more frequent and intense. The Earth then also had a weaker magnetic field. Particles from solar storms collided with nitrogen molecules in the atmosphere, breaking them into individual atoms. These, in turn, split carbon dioxide molecules into carbon monoxide and oxygen. Nitrogen combined with oxygen to form nitrous oxide, a potent greenhouse gas that would have warmed the planet enough for liquid water to exist. Energy from the solar particles may have also helped create complex compounds like DNA and RNA, the building blocks of life. Researchers piece together a timeline of the sun's evolution by analyzing data from NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, which found stars resembling our sun. NASA releases stunning video of Mercury passing over the sun. On May 9th, NASA filmed footage of Mercury passing between Earth and the Sun. The rare event, called a transit, only happens slightly more than once a decade. The transit isn't normally visible from Earth, as the three celestial bodies rarely align. Mercury was seen passing by the Sun as a tiny black dot. The planet's entire journey across the Sun, as visible from Earth, took about seven and a half hours, which, if you really think about it, isn't that long. You would have to watch Mercury pass the Sun almost nine times to match the time you would need to spend finishing the entire original Star Trek series, which takes about 67 hours to complete. Deep Space Nine takes about 16.5 times as long as the celestial event. That's a little over 126 hours. Meanwhile, Voyager takes a little over 123 hours to watch. Now, if you want to go into the animated series, which isn't quite the same, you could almost complete it in the time Mercury's transit is viewable from Earth. So in the grand scheme of things, Mercury's travel didn't take long at all, but you just won't be able to see it all the time. The event happens about 13 times a century, and the last time was in 2006, and scientists say the next one won't occur until 2019. If the sun produces a super flare, we're all doomed. A new study suggests that the sun has the potential to produce super flares that could destroy the Earth. A super flare, just like standard solar flares, occurs when large magnetic fields on the surface of a star collapse. If one occurred on the sun, the collapse would cause the sun to release gigantic amounts of energy and hot plasma that would strike Earth with an intensity of up to a hundred times worse than the most powerful solar flare ever recorded. A super flare would severely disrupt our GPS and radio communication systems, as well as our power grids. It could also wipe out Earth's atmosphere, and thus the planet's ability to support life. The largest solar eruption in recorded history, dubbed the Carrington Event, struck the Earth in September of 1859. The solar flare disrupted the telegraph system worldwide and damaged the planet's ozone layer. NASA captures sun eruption sending solar material into space. This four-hour time-lapse video released by NASA shows a solar eruption that grows into a coronal mass ejection. The footage was taken on June 18th by the Solar Dynamics Observatory. According to NASA, the eruption sent a huge cloud of coronal solar material out into space. The Solar Dynamic Observatory, or SDO, was launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida on February 11, 2010. The mission's goal is to study space weather and how it is created by changing solar activity, as well as measuring the magnetic field, the plasma of the solar corona, and how the sun creates the ionospheres of the planets in our solar system. 
NASA aims to use the SDO to understand solar activity like coronal mass ejections and how they influence life on Earth. Technological systems like satellites and electrical transmissions can be disrupted by solar activity, sometimes causing massive power outages. This is the first mission for NASA's Living with a Star program. The SDO is a four and a half meter high spacecraft, measuring more than two meters on each side and weighing 3,100 kilograms with fuel. It takes almost continuous observations as it orbits the sun. NASA captures video of solar flare. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory caught the moment the sun released a mid-level solar flare on April 17th. The flare came from an area labeled Active Region 2529, which has sported a large dark spot called a sunspot over the past several days. The sunspot changed shape and size as it slowly made its way across the sun's face over the past week and a half. It was big enough to be visible from the ground without magnification. This video was captured in several wavelengths of extreme ultraviolet light, a type of light that is typically invisible to our eyes but is color-coded for easy viewing. Solar flares are a powerful burst of radiation. Harmful radiation from a flare cannot pass through Earth's atmosphere to physically affect humans on the ground. However, when intense enough, they can disturb the atmosphere in the layer where GPS and communication signals travel. The NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center said this flare caused moderate radio blackouts. Scientists study active regions, areas of intense magnetism, of the sun to better understand why they sometimes erupt with such flares. We're going to the sun. NASA is planning an ambitious new mission to touch the sun that will supposedly revolutionize our understanding of the yellow dwarf star. Solar Probe Plus is set to launch in summer 2018 and will orbit within 4 million miles of the sun's surface, closer than any spacecraft has approached before. The probe will be equipped with a carbon composite heat shield to help it withstand temperatures of more than 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It will collect data from the corona, the sun's outer atmosphere, to help solve the mystery of why it's millions of degrees hotter than the surface. Scientists aim to study solar activity in detail, particularly how solar winds are accelerated. This could improve forecasts of space weather events, which can shake the Earth's magnetic field and impact satellite communications, astronaut safety, power grids, and radiation on flights. NASA is in the process of building the Solar Probe Plus and has already installed key elements, including the cooling system, 